Hi, Gemini. It's Ia Patsy here, and I'm going to be doing your general reading for the month of June 2018. We're going to be using the Akashic Tarot um, this month, and the Akashic Tarot is by Sharon Ann Klinger and Sandra Ann Taylor. Okay, so by popular demand, we're going to be using the Akashic Tarot, and then I'll add as spirit leads then. All right, because I don't want to promise a card and then I don't get to it. So we'll see how this goes. Let's start. First card in the reading that came up for you here was the three of scrolls. Three of scrolls. This is about setting your course, going forward, having your plans, and being on your way. But this came in the reverse for you. So in the reverse, this talks about feeling kind of lost a little anxious and nervous about something, like your plans have been upset or slowed down, um, and you are just like in a state of uh, uncertainty because your plans, you had, you thought you had your plans straight and then something happened to cause them to shift and you don't, didn't have a plan B. <laughs> you didn't have a plan B, that's what happened. <sighs> this could also be talking about a relationship that's having some problems, some um, disagreements and arguments within a relationship. The next card that came up for you here was the Buddha prepares. Okay, so this talks about um, getting ready to start a new journey. Um, taking the, uh, doing the spiritual work, doing the inner work that you need to do in order to go to the next level, all right? So you're preparing um, to go forward on your spiritual path. But this was also in the reverse. And in the reverse, this means that you are, you have all the tools you need to make the decisions that you need to make at this point to move forward you 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 are prepared you you have completed your preparation you know what you need to do you know what moves that you need to make at least you have the tools that you need to make the moves even though you're over here in a stuck position what spirit is letting you know is that you do everything that you've learned along the journey now up to now has prepared you for this time. And instead of being uh, feeling stuck and confused, you need to go inside and think over what different um, lessons you've learned over the last couple of years and use those strengths and those tools to help you know what your next move is going to be. Next card that came for you in this reading was the Akashic field, the one of forces, all right? So this is not like the tower moment, but kind of, all right, but this is coming into an awareness of the Akashic, the powers of the Akashic, you know, um, the Akashic records, okay, coming into contact with that based on your ascension, okay? And the fact that you had been preparing until you got thrown off, this was what was awaiting you, okay? This is what you are encountering. But for you, Gemini, this was in the reverse also. So I'm gonna take a look at that because I think that's a pretty important, uh, that's some pretty important information we need to look at, right? So, and this is number 13. 13 is also the number of uh, the death card, or Scorpio. So there may be a Scorpio that is involved in this scenario with you. Um, that's death, that's a new awakening, uh, a rebirth, changes. In the reverse, 
The Akashic field reverse indicates a, de a time of fragmentation and agitated energy within or around you. Okay, so that's in keeping with this. You may be going through some sort of crisis, so you may be on the receiving end of some grief or hostility, which is really throwing you for a loop. Your worry and panic is splitting your energy and causing you a frantic vibration. You need to know that the universal consciousness of creation is still available to you. Internal inspiration is always vibrating around you, but until you calm down and rein in the emotional intensity, you will be like a radio station tuned to the wrong frequency and picking up only static. The field and the world is filled with potential solutions to every problem that is making you upset. So stop, take a step back, and try to get a new perspective on things. It may be advisable to look into past life influences, for they vibrate in the Akashic field as well. Okay, so there's something, again, that has you stirred up. It might be a fear that you may have of going forward, a fear of success. It could be uh, unhealthy um, dial, uh, ideology, unhealthy relationship, um, some guilt that you might feel about something, some fear that you may have of stepping forward. But, excuse the uh, sirens, I had to have the door open because it was hot in here, so. Um, yeah, this is something that you weren't expecting, all right? Something that you weren't really prepared for, again. But it's something that you need to look at, and you have everything that you need to look at this. The last position here was supposed to be one card. It came up two cards, the Six of Roses and the Two of Keys. The Six of Roses is the war, the war of the Roses, and the Two of Keys is the treasure. So what these cards are saying here is this is about a divorce. And loss, okay, and mourning the um, the dissolution of the relationship, the change in the relationship, the fear, all right, wondering what will be left after this is over, okay. Looks like everything, all the treasure, everything is destroyed except one treasure chest. But he's still looking at all that has been lost and he's not looking behind him to see the light or on the table to see the treasure. But this is about being at a stalemate. Some some romantic relationship, whether it be a marriage or a partnership, uh, it could even be business, it could be a business relationship also, that you have reached a stalemate, there's no agreement to be reached. Okay, and one person is thinking with their head and the other one is thinking with their emotions and there's a lack of communication and doesn't seem to be a way forward. So that has, that's what um, is, what you're dealing with this month. The, the bottom of the deck was the one of scrolls on track. So, if the energy here is that you are on track, then maybe what the cards are saying here, what the Spirit's trying to tell you is that all of this upheaval and indecision, that's part of your journey. You're on the right track. This is part of your lesson. This is something that you need to go through in order to use your skills, learn what your skills are and how to use them so that you could share that information with other people. That you have to solve the stalemate or part ways 
All right. This is this is talking about a separation of a part of a, of a relationship, a partnership or a, a marriage, uh, you know, steady relationship. And it's been coming on for a minute, but it just got really bad today. But there's something out there that's inspiring you. There's something out there that is calling to you. All right, within all of this, there is someone or something that you can depend on. Something, someone who is there, some lessons of feeling that you're getting, of inspiration and creativity. Could be a, a, a it could be a past life relationship. This could be what's getting you stuck also, is the memories of the past within this relationship. This is what has kept you going maybe in this relationship. This you, you, because this is the role that you play within this. You have kept this relationship going because of the fact that you've been reminiscing on it and that you have allowed your past memories, no matter how short or brief or scattered, you've been letting that control your actions within this relationship. So you're not maybe seeing clearly you're not seeing things clearly, and that's why things are being shaken up for you. So that you can either get on the right track with your partner, or do what you need to do to escape from this situation. Now, I waited until almost 5 o'clock to come down here. <laughs> and now I got the lawnmower guys, and not even mine. Anyway. So those are the cards that came to you from the Akashic Tarot. All right, so let's see. Um, one moment, please. Let me just pause this for a second because this is ridiculous. Okay, sorry, folks. I closed the door. Hopefully, I don't get overheated. But I didn't want this. I didn't want to hear more complaints about the sound. Anyway, let's see if we can get any more, any further clarification about this situation from The Wisdom of the Hidden Realms by Colette Baron Reed. I would like to see what is. Any more messages about this part of the reading? Okay. All right. The Metal King. This is about discipline, honor, and boundaries, number 10. So this is about you, the individual, Gemini. All right. This, this is about setting boundaries, protecting yourself. Putting yourself first, looking out for your best interest, okay? Telling the truth, but standing up for yourself. All right, let me see if there's anything else. Let's see if there's anything else, any other clarification we can get for Gemini in regards to this situation. For... June 2018. This is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising. Okay. In regards to this relationship, in regards to... In regards to this Akashic field, this tower moment, any further information on how Gemini can handle this going forward? Can I get one more card, Spirit, please? One more card. 
Any further information? Alrighty, thank you. Very good. All right, the bottom of the deck was creativity and vastness. Number 41. So this is talking about change. It's also talking about the universe at your fingertips. Access to the universe. It also talks about some secrets that may be at the bottom of this problem. The card that came to you here, number 25. 25 is 2 and 5, and that adds up to 7. The eyes of beauty. Positive expectations and clarity. Okay, so this is saying to me that once you set your boundaries in this situation, then you will get the clarity that you seek and you will get positive results. So set your boundaries in relationship to this uh, relationship. Okay. And that will bring you clarity. This number seven is creation. So maybe this is creating a new way of you operating within this relationship or within the world. All right. But you are going to see exactly what it is that you are going to need to do in regards to this. Once you open your eyes, set boundaries, protect yourself, show some discipline. Okay. If there are things that you've done to contribute to this uproar or this, um, uneasiness in this relationship, there are changes that you need to make also, but I feel you need to stand up for yourself, set your boundaries and set positive expectations. Be optimistic about getting what you want, about having this situation resolve itself in a positive way for you whether it be emotionally or materially and most important spiritually it's talking about asserting your self standing up for your principles for your rights for the things that you believe in not giving over to other people's beliefs okay being proud of the gifts that you have and the creativity, all right, that you had and not allowing yourself to be clouded, not letting your vision be clouded by thoughts of the past anymore, but looking at things clearly, looking at what is happening in front of you in the present right now, what has brought you to this place. Okay, let's see what the uh, numerology, numerology deck has to say about the situation. And this is by Michelle Buchanan. Uh, every time I get ready to say Michelle Bachman. Oh my God, I got to stay off of MSNBC. <laughs> but she hasn't been on there for a minute. But there was some funky stuff about her on Twitter yesterday. Oh well. Uh, uh. Okay. Three cards fell for you there for the numerology deck. And I'm going to be nice and I'm going to take all of them. Not going to read the book for everyone, I don't believe. I don't think I have to. Number 85 says, follow your dreams. And then you got number 88, abundance. And number 66, healing. So you have a master number 88, master number 66. Love will bring you healing. And this 
situation is going to lead to abundance. Eighty-five, follow your dreams. So you got two, six, you got sixty-six and eighty-eight. So this could have been some. This could have been a soulmate relationship. Or it could be saying that as after you heal and you go forward and follow your dreams, you'll be going towards your twin flame. Okay, if that's what you are seeking. 85. This card indicates a time to reach out to the stars and follow your dreams whatever they may be. By drawing this card, you are being encouraged to put your hopes and dreams at the forefront of your mind and to believe without a doubt that they are really coming true. Pay no attention to the poverty consciousness, the fear, or the competition because the universe is abundant and there is no limitation even though you have no control over how and when things will unfold, divine timing and order will ensure that everything serves your greater good. Let go of expectations and embrace the magic in the mystery. For in celebrating the unknown, you will attract synchronistic opportunities, even when you feel as if Success is way beyond your reach. Never give up on your dreams because they really will come true. In order to improve your current situation, you're being asked to adjust to and harmonize with the natural rhythm and cycles of your life. Cycles that are encouraging you to keep following your dreams. Your dreams are already set in motion and are unfolding in perfect timing. They cannot be taken away because they're already karmically etched in stone. So this is divine. This is what's going to happen regardless of what you do or how you do it. Whether it's that this relationship breaks up or that this relationship heals or that you leave this relationship and move to a new relationship. But whatever it is, is definitely time for you to follow your dreams that are going to lead you to healing and abundance. So is the healing going to take place within this relationship or is this the healing that is about you? Is it a healing of you both? Is that why you have double eights and double sixes? But this is about you, right? This was about you, right? We said that here. Standing up for yourself and setting your boundaries. Creating something. Looking at something in a new way. Clarity. So I would say for some of you, this is about you removing yourself from this relationship and going forward, salvaging what you can, being proud of yourself for learning the lessons and being able to ascend and following your dreams. Let's see if we can get any further information from the Goddess Guidance Oracle Oracle deck, and that's by Doreen Virtue. A lot of secrets, but there's a lot of expansion. The universe is waiting for you to open up and to join, join your creativity with the vastness of the universe. 
There's so many things open to you. There are lots of things open. Opportunities. Opportunities. All right. Okay. So the card that you got from the Goddess Guidance Oracle is Astara. Fertility. It is the perfect time for you to start new projects, assess new ideas, and give birth to new conditions. So this, again, is change and growth. Okay? New projects. Creativity. Could be a childbirth or a pregnancy. Hopefully in a relationship that is uh, under control. Not to bring any children into any upside down situations the babies do not save relationships that's too much weight to put on a baby's head can't get it together before the baby gets there don't make a baby It's the perfect time for you to start new projects, access new ideas, and give birth to new conditions. So changes within your life, changes in your environment. Springtime is any time when the light increases within your mind and entire system. If you feel dark, heavy, or depressed, then you can lighten up by fueling yourself with positive intentions, nurturing foods, and anything that sparks your feelings of love. Surround yourself with beautiful flowers, brighten the colors of your wardrobe and home, and draw back the curtains to let in the natural light. You can paint a sunnier outlook within yourself, which will give rise to all sorts of new opportunities. Since like attracts like, feel more energized and powerful as you spruce up your inner and outer worlds. Then capitalize on your increased vigor by starting a new project that really makes your heart sing with excitement. This card talks about pregnancy, saying you will be involved with a successful conception or an adoption or a custody uh, resolution. Your desires will fully manifest this springtime. There will be a resurrection of the old. Your new idea or venture will be successful it is an opportune time to make life changes. So, there will be changes. It can be a resurrection of the old. Maybe the relationship that you in will take a positive turn. It could also be that maybe someone uh, from your past could be coming back into your um, atmosphere, or at least there may be a resolution of a uh relationship from your past possible all right so let's see if we can get some information from the native spirit oracle and that's by denise lynn okay thank you spirit okay the card that you got was warrior of the heart Warrior of the heart. Okay, let's see what that's speaking about. You have the radiant spirit of a warrior of the light. Be impeccable in all of your actions. No matter what others believe, the creator always knows the truth. This isn't the time to be timid and pull back. Immense courage is filling you. Throw your shoulders back, step forward, and take a risk. Be willing to live life from your heart rather from your mind. Honor your truth and speak up for yourself. <laughs> Your native spirit wants you to know the greatest native warriors 
weren't the ones who wounded the most people. They were those remarkable kings who had such personal power that enemies laid down their weapons rather than fight. There are times in life to step back and even times to walk away, but there are also times to stand up for yourself and for those less advantaged. Don't allow yourself to be limited by your belief system. Courage doesn't mean that you aren't afraid. Fearless means just that. Fear less. Acknowledge that you're frightened and take action anyway. Face your anxiety and go beyond the boundaries of limited perceptions of your self. Through your example, people find and act on their truth. You are a light bearer for others. List everything that you're afraid of. Then next to that list, write every reason why it's important to overcome that fear. In other words, what does that fear cost you? Then make a list of the various ways that you can overcome that fear. Well, there were some instructions. See, the divine just gave you the instructions. Do this, pros and cons. What is it costing you? What does it make? How is it making you feel? What is it costing you in your spirit, physically, and materially? And then go forth with the heart of a warrior to protect yourself and to stand up for yourself. Very good. Okay, so. This month, we're going to see if we can get some messages from a new deck, and that's the Past Life Oracle, okay? And this is also by Doreen Virtue, along with Brian Weiss, MD. So, I'm going to see if we can get some messages about your past life or information that you may need to know that might help you in regards to this situation. Maybe there's some issues that they spoke, like what they spoke about um, with the uh, Akashic field in reverse. Maybe there's something in reference to your past life experiences that once healed will help you to be able to go forward, right? And we know that there's a healing involved in this experience for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get three cards, right? And you are going to decide which card you want to answer your question or to um, relate to. So, and basically, you're going to use your intuition to figure out which one of these cards is going to be relatable to either this situation for you or some other situation that's been on your heart. All right. So I'm going to get three cards and then I'll read each one of the cards to you. And we'll see what information we unlock. So can I get some cards for sign of Gemini, sun, moon, and rising? What messages do we have for the month of June 2018? All right, so I'm going to make three piles. Pile number one, card number one. Pile number two, card number two, pile number three, card number three. Put everybody else back. Okay, so take a deep breath. We're going to read card number one first. So if you've picked card number one, this is your message. Monk or none.
<laughs> what the heck? What is this? Is this about sex? Somebody try y'all trying to turn this into a love reading again? Who just did it? Oh, Taurus. They just did that to me last night. Okay, let's see. Monk or nun? Mm. That's interesting. Let's see. You drew this card as a result of your past lifetime as a monk, a nun, or someone similar. This means that you lived a life filled with isolation, rules, and spiritual devotion. In your lifetime now, you may notice your tendency to isolate yourself from others. In fact, you likely feel most comfortable when you're by yourself. Other people may even refer to you as a monk. If this pattern is interfering with your relationships, you might consider having sessions with a qualified life regressionist. In addition, you may have taken vows as a monk or a nun, and that may be interfering with your relationship, career, and more. Unless these vows were severed, they carry forward through time. So for instance, if you took a vow of poverty, you may be struggling today with financial insecurity. Other past life vows could be connected to chastity, which can impact your present romantic life, or self-denial, which causes you to feel undeserving or fearful of abundance. Often it's simply, often it's enough simply to consciously bring the memories of these vows to the surface in order to release them. Then it's just a matter of clearly severing them in all directions of time. You can do this by simply saying the following. I hereby sever and release any vows that are self-destructive in all directions of time for everyone involved. Ah, oh, Shay. Whew. I hereby sever and release any vows that are self-destructive in all directions of time for everyone involved. Okay, let me know if you felt anything when uh, that was being read. Did you feel something in your body or in your, you know, extremities? Did you breathe? Did your breathing change? Did your heart skip a beat? Anything. Any kind of reaction like that, that may indicate that this message was indeed for you. I say, that's beautiful. Well, that's good directions. And since you don't know, I would suggest everybody <laughs> do that, okay? Because that'll release you from some karmic, um, bow, um, you know, binds for yourself and for your uh, descendants. And maybe your, your, uh, ancestors and they must have been wanting this to happen for them to send this message and these cards to me to do so i've had the cards for a minute i just decided to open them up yesterday so do that i say those of you who felt drawn to card number two let's see with your messages atlantis Hmm. Atlantis. This could be talking about a twin flame relationship or at least a relationship that you've been in for a while. I'm saying that due to the dolphins there. Atlantis. Mm. Let's see what that message is. Wow, nice Atlantis. Your lifetime in ancient Atlantis is affecting your current situation. You have soul memories of this idyllic civilization that offered every imaginable wonder. There's a longing for the utopia that you unconsciously remember and which you know is possible in this world. Your soul also remembers the tragic ending of Atlantis and may 
and you may have developed phobias about the ocean as a result. Although you love the sea, perhaps you prefer not to go swimming or sailing. You also recall how the majority of Atlanteans were peace-loving, with the exception of a few political leaders who misused crystal power to the detriment of all. So you may be extra sensitive to issues relating to political corruption in this lifetime. Okay. Okay, interesting, Ashe. So if you find yourself um, paying a lot of attention to political issues and um, extra sensitive to these things, corruption, if you like this, you like to be by the sea, but you have a, a fear of drowning or anything or swimming or anything like that. This message, message number two, Atlantis may have been for you. All right. Again, how did you react? Also, maybe later on after you watch this video and you go to bed, maybe you'll start to have dreams that may bring you back to any of these two energies or the next one, any of these memories or um, so I would, I would keep a piece of paper by your bed, you know, by my bed and write these, write the notes down. If you remember your dreams in the morning, if you don't remember them, what impressions do you get during the day? Do you have any synchronicities that go on in regards to any of these messages during the time period between now and the end of June, whenever you watch this video? Pay attention to synchronicities. They may give you a hint as to whether or not these messages were um, something that your soul resonated with. And feel free to come back at any time and watch this video again. And feel free at any time to make a comment and update us, the community, on what you what was revealed to you as much as you feel comfortable for, with. And if not, if you want to send me an email, pbtarot7 at gmail.com and let me know how you felt, then um, I would really love to, to get some feedback on this because I think that this is an important tool. If it works, I'd like to be able to continue to employ it, okay? For those of you who picked card number three, the message for you is health. Hmm. All right. First thing I got is maybe you were involved in the health profession. Maybe you were a doctor or a nurse. Let's see what health is talking about. Your relationship to health and healing is influenced by other lifetimes. You may be suffering from a physical problem that was inflicted upon you during your past life. Perhaps you reincarnated so quickly that you didn't have time to deal with the underlying issues. Your physical health has caused you hardship, yet has also taught you a deeper level of compassion than you could have learned in a healthy body. You also developed healing skills that can benefit others. In fact, you may already know that you're a healer. The knowledge, this knowledge was acquired in previous lifetimes when you performed healings for others. Back then, your earthly needs were likely taken care of by the community. So you may struggle with the idea of charging money for healing worth in this lifetime. It's helpful to know that in this current Western society, everyone must charge for their work including those who provide spiritually based service, services. So this is also, you know, reminding you that if you are a healer or you're doing any kind of uh, spiritual work, that is no sin to charge for your service. Okay. And um, because the community doesn't, we don't look out for each other like we used to, you know, when you ask, when, when those things are available, it's called what's socialism or welfare states or whatever like that. You know, unless you, you know, don't donate money to the pastor, then, you know, it's all good. Right. But 
you personally for the work that you do as a healer, whatever kind of modality your healing is in, there's no reason for you to feel um, bad about taking, you know, derecho. That's what they call it in Santeria, in Santeria, in Ifa, derecho, something that you give back, an offering that you give for the services that you would give to the Babalao or uh, the reader or whoever came to you, the midwife, whatever, you would pay that person. So um, if this is the case, don't feel bad. And if this is the case, make sure that you give, you know, financially donate to those charities, those people around you. Make sure you pay your doctors and your uh, healers and things like that and appreciate the work that they do, the energy that they're exchanging in order to bring you healing and to bring you healing lessons. Okay, so thank you all very, very much. I hope you all enjoyed your reading and I will be seeing everyone again at the middle of the month for your love bite. So thank you very much. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, make comments. Let me know how you like this reading, okay? And I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you so much. Bye.